Hello, everybody, and welcome to Rautalampi, Finland, host of our fourth ATSX 500 event on this 2020 Red Bull Ice Cross World Championship season. This will be the last 500 event before we head to Yokohama for the big ATSX 1000 event, which will be exciting. The gang here has been working hard to make sure this track is up to snuff for all our athletes and it's looking very good. It's very cold and we have one in particular here that wants to win this one. There he is, Kyle Croxall, who has been solid. He won his first event of the season in Montulac in Wisconsin. That was an ATSX 500 event as well. And he'll be looking to repeat that performance here and gain some needed points against a very strong opponent, Cameron Nas, who is not present at this particular race. Before we get to racing though, we are going to check out this track with a former junior world champion and local boy, Mirko Latti. Hello everyone, and welcome to beautiful Finland, Rotolampi. My name is Mirko Latti, and I saw you in the track. Okay guys, let's take a look what the track looks like. Couple of strides, little drop, first wave. Tight corner, two options there. Step up, couple of strides, step down. We grow her. A left turn here, small step down, and two options again. And a big bump here. Gaining speed for the jump. Woo! Step down, really fast to the floater. And two more rollers. Really fast. Last turn and the finish line. Woo! Not the longest track of the season, but peppy and interesting with lots of features, which will make it difficult for passing. Now, the DeLago brothers didn't make the trip to Wisconsin in the USA to race at that 500 event, but Marco DeLago, that man right there, won the very first event of the season in Judenburg. And of course, we talked about Kyle Croxall earlier, who won in Montulac and is looking to repeat that performance here try and get on the podium every time. I always want to come out with a win, but uh, at least get on the podium, get some points on this 500 and uh, go into the two end races with a nice lead. In the women's field, Canada's Jacqueline Legere is currently holding down the lead, chased by reigning world champion Amanda Tronzo, Anise Moran and Miriam Trepanier are right behind them. I want to go as fast as I can. I hope to be on the podium. Of course, I'm reaching for the tallest step on that podium and that's what I'm going for. Let's get racing. Men's quarterfinal heat number one. Far left hand side, there you have Danny Bergeson right next to him, Yeri Leto, then Marco Delago, former world champion, and Jojo Velasquez, who is racing both in the men's and the juniors division. Jojo with a great start, but it is Yeri Leto out to an early lead. Jeez, look at the battle going on there through the split. Marco Delago squeaking out in front. Bergeson right behind him. Jojo Velasquez goes down, is off to the side, and that is it for him in this one. Quarterfinal action is knockout, and that means Jojo is going to be not racing anymore with the men today. Big jump there by Marco Delago as he leads this one down. The battle now is for second place, and it looks like it will go to Danny Bergeson, but Yeri Leto's got a good inside line there. He's going to make it through across that finish line in second. Oh, he does. He blocks out Bergy right at that corner and manages to get that inside line for second place. Great start by the Finn, Yeri Leto, who gets out pretty nicely and squeezes Marco Delago in that first corner, but he gets pushed to the outside line on the split and Marco takes advantage right there. And look at that greasy move by Delago. That's where he gets the lead. And here, Jojo just trying to find a line, gets a little bit too deep on those edges, loses it, and he's off in the snowbank on the side. Right here is the crucial point though for Yeri Leto as he's got the better inside line at that last corner. Nicely done, Yeri Leto is second place to Marco Delago. They move to the semi. The start is getting better now. They're it's got tighter. So it was close to the first turn and I saw Yeri coming tight but fast into it. So I thought he will slip outside so I tried to overtake him on the inside, it worked. Luckily, Danny Bergeson was not so quick out of the turn. I could take first there, and from there I went. So, yeah, it was good. But still, like, it gets hard now. 
Quarterfinal number two, Max Nymark, Patrick Mertz, Dmitry Merlichkin, Kyle Kroxall. Merlichkin and Kroxall could be in a big battle here, and it looks like that's the way it's going to go right out the gate. Kroxall trying to find that good line, hops over the tires, and he is such a big guy when he gets out in front. He's hard to pass, especially on a track that is windy and snaking down a mountain like this one. Merlichkin holding on to second place just by a thread, though, as he is being chased down hard. Kroxall needs to be good on his edges. Merlichkin airs that double drop right nicely over those last ones. Kroxall looking good. Merlichkin and Kroxall opening out that lead to second and third place here. And yeah, it's going to be a solid win there for Kroxall and Merlichkin. They're moving on to the next round. Let's look back at this start. Huge push by Kyle Kroxall out of the gate. Dmitry Merlichkin who has been solid all season long and looking just better and better each time he gets out on course. Ops for the inside of that split, and he's battling hard to try and find a line. And he just manages to get into that second place ahead of Patrick Mertz, who is really pushing hard at the top. But Merlitschkin bests him at the finish line, and it's going to be Kroxall and Merlitschkin moving on to the semis. Quarterfinal heat number three, Richard Van Wijhe, Mirko Lati, former junior world champion, now can only race with the men, along with Luca Delago and anti Crazy Legs Tolvenen in this one. Wow, great start by all of the guys. Richard Van Wijhe trailing in the back a little bit, but takes a nice inside line on the split. Just can't seem to pass the group that's battling out in front. Luca Delago with the lead. Mirko Lati right on his tail. Antti Tolvanen now gets relegated back to fourth place. This is a track that should suit him fairly well with his style of skating, but Richard Van Wijhe so solid on his skates, and he is definitely one of the veterans, but at this point, it doesn't look like anybody's going to catch up to Luca Delago or Mirko Lati as they make that last left-hand turn towards the finish line. Oh, and Richard Van Wijhe goes down like a ton of bricks, and Antti Tolvanen comes across in third because of that crash. Let's look at this start again, though. Wow, look at how tight it is. Antti Tolvanen, Luca Delago, Mirko Lati, all three of them. Tolvanen trying to find that tight inside line, almost hip checks the tree. And here, he's in a great battle in back there with Richard Van Wijhe, but Van Wijhe just gets the better of him. And here at the finish, man, it's just Luca Delago looking so good. Nice, tight, compact jump, pre jumps those last rollers. Mirko Lati right there with them. Quick corner, and those two guys are moving on to the semi-final. And of course, the Finns are definitely on Mirko Lati's side. There you see all of his fans on the sidelines, and it's going to be Luca Delago, Mirko Lati moving on to the semis. Uh, it was a good battle. I had the third pick on the gate, so I was looking what the guy's going to do, and passing the first right turn, and yeah, it was pretty easy after that. Corner final number four with another fast fin, Levi Nakari. He's in there with the Brit Robin Whirling, Canada's Shane Renault, and the Czech Republic's Vaclav Kosnar. Robin Whirling with a nice start right there with Shane Renault. They get a bit tangled up, and that leaves the door open for Vaclav Kosnar, who takes advantage moving into the lead. We're on board with Levi Nakari right now. He's sitting in the back there. Oh, Kosnar puts a knee down, but it doesn't seem to have affected him too much. He is still out in front with Robin Warling trying to find that line to make the pass. Really hard to pass on this course with so many jips and jibes. Warling holding on to second place. Levi Nakari and Shane Renault battling from the back end. Vaclav Kosnar has got this one in the bag though and Robin Warling's going to go with him to the semifinal. Oh, and Shane Renault, a last ditch effort to try and get across that finish line. Doesn't work for him though. Out of the start, you could see Robin Whirling with a fantastic jab right out there and gets a bit tangled up with Shane Renault. He has to take the outside line at the split. And meanwhile, Vaclav Kosnar, he basically had control of this one from that first corner and never really let it go. One small hiccup when he put a knee down, but it didn't really seem to affect him. He got right back up, as you can see. He was quick, and he managed to stay out in front. So it's a one-two punch with Vaclav Kosnar and Robin Whirling moving on to the semifinal. By the way, Robin Whirling also racing in the juniors.
Pari tuttua ne meidän varmasti on finaalissa. Finaalista tänäänkin, että on tänään podiumina tottunut tulemaan. Ja niin kuin sanoit, että aina niitä yllätyksiä kuitenkin tulee. Looking back quickly at the women's quarterfinals, plenty of action going on here in this one. Anais Moran with a solid race in hand with Malgorzata Sinovic right behind her. Anais had this one down and it was Malgorzata that came in second place just and those two will move on to the semifinals. In this second quarter final, it was a great battle between Justine Zona and Miriam Trapani. It looked like Miriam Trapani was going to be relegated back, but she took a great inside line there and managed to stay with Zona right to the finish line, and she'll be joining Zona in the semifinals. Next heat's got our world champ in there, and she looked good off the start. Right here, had a little bit of problems with the roller set, and almost got passed for a third place relegation, but she managed to come back with her fantastic strong skating and actually won this heat, also moving to the semis. I tried something I hadn't tried yet on those uh, rollers. I won't be doing that again, uh, but just wanted to try it in that first race, see how it worked, and uh, now I know what to do. Her main competition this year and for the last few years has been Canada's Jacqueline Legere. Jacqueline is currently leading in the overall standings coming into this race and she looked pretty solid here at this event. A little bit of a struggle at the last section here but managed to come across that finish line along with Veronica Vindish. So we'll see them in the semifinals. Speaking of semifinals, here we go with semifinal number one, Malgorzata Sinovic on the far left hand side right next to her, Miriam Trapanje, then Justine Zona and Anais Morand. One of these days I'm going to get Sinovic's name exactly right and everybody's going to be happy but in the meantime, let's race. Great start by Anais Moran, who was out of that gate like a shot. And Zona goes down on board now with Miriam Trapanje, looking at Anais Moran open up a lead on her. Miriam Trapanje battling now with Malgozata Sinovic, who is chasing her hard. And Miriam up, oh, puts on a little bit of the break check there, and that could have cost her that second place spot, the all important second position here to make it to the final. Miriam Trapanje chasing her first ever world championship title, and she is in good position, but she really needs to work hard. Anais Moran, nobody's touching her on this one. She's looking fantastic this year, skating hard, working hard, training hard, and it's really showing in this season. Miriam Trapanje comes across that line in second place. So Anais and Miriam going on to the final, but look at the start by Anais. The diminutive Swiss girl just exploded out of that start gate, and there was the battle for second place between Malgorzata and Miriam Trapanje. A little bobble at the line by Anais, but she kept her edges and got across that finish line in first with Miriam Trapanje right behind her, and the dab to celebrate. So Anais Morant and Miriam Trapanje moving on to the final. Semi-final number two with two world champions in there. The former world champion Jacqueline Legere and the reigning world champion Amanda Trunzo along with Veronica Vindish who's been very good this year and Tam Mavison who has also been super solid. This could be a final heat. Great start by Jacqueline Legere, who gets out front early. Oh my goodness! And Tam Mavison and Amanda Trunzo, the two Americans, get tangled up with each other and have to battle from behind in third and fourth places. Great opportunity for Veronica Vindish to try and catch up with Jacqueline Legere, who is leading this one. And here comes Amanda Trunzo. She's such a strong skater. She's definitely got a chance here to catch up with Vindish, but it is a big gap to close here. Jacqueline Legere, a good solid lead, but she doesn't want to rest on her laurels here. She'll take that left hand turn and pedal right to the finish line. And it's going to be a battle. Oh, yeah, it's going to go to Veronica Vindish. Amanda Trunzo eliminated in the semifinal. She'll be unhappy about that. She got tangled up with Mavison right at the start here. Look at this. Yeah, she gets a little bit of her footing all caught up. Then Mavison does a header over top of Trunzo, leaving the gate wide open for Jacqueline Legere and Veronica Vindish in 1-2 positions, respectively. 
And that was basically all she wrote. If this track were another 100 meters longer, though, I bet you dollars to donuts that Trunzo would have caught up because she is just such a solid skater. Tough break for Trunzo, but a great job by Veronica Bindish to stay solid and get that second place and move on to a final along with Jacqueline Legere, who is leading the charge this season. I kind of had my line up there, felt a little bit of a push after that first roller. Um, guess it wasn't enough for a DQ, but definitely not happy. Uh, but short term memory and off to Japan. Semi-final number one for the men. Marco Delago in there along with Kyle Croxall. These two have had a running battle for the last three seasons, so it will be interesting to see how this one boils down. I believe this is the first heat they've been in together this season. Let's not count out Yeri Leto or Dmitry Merlichkin. Yeri Leto's got a great start. He's in a bit of a tough lane choice, though, on the far outside, and he's got in a nice clean line at the split, but he's sitting in fourth place along with Merlichkin there in third. They're battling hard, and it's Marco Delago out in front, leading just ahead of Kyle Croxall. This is a type of course that absolutely suits Marco Delago's style. He's much smaller than Croxall, and he's very fleet of foot. Not to say that Croxall isn't fast, but Croxall's a guy that tends to dominate when he gets out in front and can block and really use his gliding ability. Croxall puts on the brakes really quickly, and it's going to be a nice run to the finish line for Marco Delago and Kyle Croxall, one and two, as they move on to the final. Let's pick this one apart a little bit. Really nice start by Kyle Croxall, actually. That was one of his weaknesses a few years ago, and he has definitely amended that. Right there, though, a beautiful inside greasy pass from Marco Delago around those tires, and that was all she wrote. Marco stayed out in front and held off the big body of Kyle Croxall to the finish line. Nevertheless, they're going to be seeing each other in the final. It was a good run. Uh... Got out front first, just didn't uh, hold my line, he snuck inside, but uh, feeling good coming to the final here and going for the win. All right, let's see the other two ice cross action figures that are going to join them in the final will be Robin Whirling, Mirko Lati, Luca Delago, or Vaclav Kosnar, all of them looking great today. Luca Delago, Mirko Lati, nice quick start on board with Robin Whirling there, who's sitting in third place. Oh, and we've got ourselves a garage sale. Vaclav Koznar gets caught in the hurricane fencing on the side, and it is Robin Whirling out in front at the moment with Mirko Lati right on his tail. Luca Delago trying to find a line to pass, but like I said, this is a tough one to pass on. Robin Whirling, oh my goodness, Mirko Lati is right on top of him, and this is going to be shoulder to shoulder at that left hand turn. Can Luca Delago do it? He's made the inside line, and it's going to be a push to the finish. Oh my goodness, I think that Mirko Lati knows he lost that one by a blade tip. Here's that crash. Vaklav Kosnar goes down takes Luca with them. Luca's sitting in third place now, and he has to do his best to catch up with a couple of big, good skaters out in front, but he chose a great line here and just squeezes Mirko Lati out into third place, and the last few strides to the finish line, yep, and there you go, just by a toe. He takes it, second place goes to Luca Delago, first place Robin Whirling, and that means we'll see those two guys in the final, and that will be Robin Whirling's first final ever. Good job for him. It's, it's always nice to raise my brother. Um, I'm gonna have a fourth gate pick, so uh, it's gonna be a battle probably, but I'm excited for it. I have like a little legs left, so it should be good. Women's final in the block, the surprise here, eh, none actually. They're all fantastic skaters. Veronica Vindish, Miriam Trepanier, Jacqueline Legere, Anais Moran. Actually, the only surprise is that there's no Amanda Trunzo in the mix here. Our reigning world champion eliminated in the earlier heat. Good start by Anais Morand once again. She's been so quick out of the gate. Jacqueline Legere sitting in second place. Nice clean corner by Miriam Trepanier to move from fourth into third place just ahead of Austria's Veronica Vindish. Anais Morand a little sketchy landing on that roller set and Anais out in front. 
Jacqueline Legere not that far behind. And it looks like it's going to be Anais winning another one here. Jacqueline Legere pushing hard though to catch up to Anais. Whoa, what a pass on that straightaway over the rollers. And Jacqueline Legere has moved into first just ahead of Anais Moran. And it's going to be Veronica Vindish coming across in third place. A great podium for Veronica Vindish. Wow, what a battle there. Miriam Trepanier looking a bit dejected coming across the line in fourth. And what a fantastic push at the end by Jacqueline Legere to take the win here in Rauta Lampi. It's like we always say in ice cross downhill, anything and everything can happen. Anais Morant. She had a fantastic start once again. Jacqueline Legere never really let her get too far away. A little bobble right there, but she was still safe. Jacqueline bided her time. She's a great skater. As a stunt woman, she also knows that she can take risks from time to time. And it was just that little skull push over that one roller set. Sucked them up nicely. And the last sprint to the finish line, a great win for Jacqueline, who extends her season lead, earning another 500-point win here in Rauta Lampi. I was super happy to make it to the final. It's been, there's a lot of good girls here. So to take the win feels amazing. It wasn't an easy race. And that's what makes it fun. So looking at the official results for Rauta Lampi, Jacqueline Legere with the win, Anais Moran in second, and Veronica Vindish in third. That's your podium here for this ATSX 500 from Rauta Lampi, but we still have the men's final to get to. For those of you that follow Ice Cross Downhill, you'll know there's no love lost between the DeLago brothers and the Croxall brothers, but there's only one of them in the gate today, that's Kyle Croxall, whereas there are the two DeLago brothers, both Luca and Marco are in there. And Robin Warling, nice to see a different face up there in this final. Here we go. Five second warning. Go! Another great start by all four of these guys. Luca DeLago trying to find some line here with his brother. He gets pushed out to the side. Marco DeLago out there in front, right behind him. Robin Worling in third place. Kyle Croxall, big guy. And you can see on that camera angle from Luca DeLago, he's just hard to get by. There's so much person in front of you. On board now with Robin Worling, and that's what it looks like to race behind Marco DeLago from time to time, or more often than not, I guess you could say. Marco looking very good here. And the last push to the finish line is going to be Marco DeLago, Kyle Croxall, and in third place, Robin Worling. What a great final heat of the day. Marco DeLago earning another 500 points. First of all, when I saw the start pick order, I was really happy that with Robin Worling, there's a new guy in the final, and he's next to me, and I thought, that's tight, but that's better than Kyle beside me, so I could take the start. And yeah, from there I just was kind of afraid. I heard skating behind me. I went just as fast as I could and it was enough, luckily. Yeah, I had a third gate pick out of the start there. Uh, people bunched up so I couldn't get back in front, which I wanted to do, and uh, gained some speed at the end and almost had it, but just not quite enough. Official men's results for Raut de Lampi. Marco de Lago wins it. Kyle Croxall takes second place on the podium. Robin Worling, great job for him. First final in third place. So there you see our podium for our women with Jacqueline Legere winning this one. Anais Moran in second place and Veronica Vindish in third which means Jacqueline Legere still holds on to the top spot in the overall standings with 1,600 points. Amanda Trunzo right behind her with 1,575. Anais Moran in third place in the overall with 1,350. So this three-way battle will continue in Japan. Meanwhile, there is our men's winner, Marco DeLago. That's two wins on the season for him, and that's 1,000 points going into his bucket. And that means Marco is currently sitting in fourth place, believe it or not, with his brother Luca up on top. Cameron Na is still holding down second, and Kyle Croxall solidly in third place. With the unexpected elimination of Amanda Trunzo early on in the racing, 
We didn't see the world champion making it to the final and plenty of fantastic action for the men, including the first ever race into a final for Robin Whirling from Great Britain. The racing here at the ATSX 500 event in Rautalampi was off the charts and you got to give credit where credit is due. They did a great job building this course to make it challenging, fun and exciting for the riders and for the spectators alike. The Red Bull Ice Cross World Championship moves on to Yokohama, Japan for our first ATSX 1000 point event race of the season and see what kind of drama unfolds on that track for the big money points. Until then everyone, ciao.